try, try, try again. Yeah. Maybe you wanna give us a quick intro real quick? Yeah, let's do it. Say what we're doing. Let's do it. This shit is dirty, bro. Dude, you need this? Maybe. <laughs> quick intro. Uh, middle of the week. Thought it'd be cool to update YouTube with the JZX90. We talked about doing this, so let's do it. Today we'll cruise around, go to some of my old school like street drifting spots, our old downtown like Plano car meet spot, and really just do a feature on this car. So let's do it. Quick mission right now is coffee and throw this thing around downtown Denton for some like cool shots. It's just one big blurry blob for you guys right here. <laughs> That's it. Look at it. Gotta be nice to her before she warms up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't be too fucking rude to her. Yeah, I'm stoked, man. This thing's finally, like, just running well. Um, what's good? I don't know. So this is, um, not necessarily a morning routine, but a place to go to get some coffee. Get, uh, some food. Jupiter House. They got good vibes. I heard this is your favorite spot. I go here a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's it's cool. Sunset, sunset. Still I'm not dying yet. Are you having fun yet? Are we having fun yet? Are you excited? And for the fun part, actually driving this thing, dude. So, right now we're headed to what used to be like a pretty low-key car meet spot. So, back in the day it was like my buddy Joseph, Jeff Lane, George Lopez who had passed away, Elmer, like our whole crew would basically get together, meet at this spot, we'd like wash our car, do whatever upgrades to them, meet at this exact spot, and then go drive around Dallas to then street drift. So, once the JZX90 got done, I really wanted to just drive it there. And obviously with Tino on board, it just made sense to try to go scope it out and just kind of like think about old times. But in the meantime, Tito, maybe we can knock some of those questions out. And I wanted to ask you stuff, mainly more for me. Yeah. Because I'm curious. Please. First, just kind of general basis, like how long you've been doing this, how old you, how old you are and stuff. Yeah, my social security number. But yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Credit card stuff. Credit card info. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, so I'm 35 years old. Dude, you look young. Yeah, definitely. Don't, no, not a lot of people think I'm 35. Yeah, I would have guessed probably like 30 most. Yeah, yeah, dude. So I don't believe in age. <laughs> 35 years old. Uh, I've been, I guess, fucking with cars for close to maybe, let's say, 20 years. I know I've been drifting for sure for going on 11 years. Um, there's probably, you know, just like getting my first car, front wheel drive, burnouts that didn't work out, to jumping into like my first real car, which was a RX-7 FD. So I had a Jetta, and when I realized the Jetta couldn't drift, I went to a dealership that had an FD, and I basically s traded it in. Uh, that guy really advised me to not do that, but obviously <laughs> I did that. Um, so I started in an FD, cruising around, which obviously is like a pretty high bar of entry. That is pretty high. I didn't really know at the time, and they were much more affordable back then. So I started street drifting, and once I scarred up a fender and I realized what it cost to put a fender on it, I had to let that thing go. So yeah, I've been uh, kind of drifting for, call it close to 15 years. When did the whole like screen printing business idea come to mind? So I originally like had a day job where I was putting circuit boards into or like I was like an SMT operator so it's like a surface mount technician so I ran a machine that was basically putting all the components on a circuit board and it was just super mundane it was something I fell into uh, through my mom so all my friends were working at the same spot and we just like had a dream to drift and I basically just chipped away at that dream so for the screen printing was I'm working putting circuit board parts together and it was super, I just couldn't stand it. Like I was like doing the same thing all day, every day. And I 
had an opportunity to learn screen printing, which I thought was much more creative, and I knew every day would feel a little bit different, so I jumped on that. So I've been screen printing for probably like 20 years. Your first like serious drift car, like when you're like, all right, maybe I should start taking driving a little more serious. Yeah, that was a 240. The red hatchback pig nose. Oh, um, okay. Yep, tying coilovers, SR20. And the influence came from George Lopez, so I'll have to pull some photos for you to put in here. I don't know if I can find any old video. <laughs> My sister, she had a boyfriend. His name was George Lopez. He passed away. And he was a huge, like, crucial part to so much of my life. So George got me into 240s, and I had the opportunity to pick one up for super cheap uh, from my buddy at the time, uh, Ryan Elliott, who basically had a chassis that he would just smoke weed out of. <laughs> so this car just sat in some grass, and they just smoked weed in it. So I picked that up for nothing. Um, you have any goals for 2023? 23, dude. Absolutely. Yeah, goals for 23, let's make more content. I want to be more consistent, so you guys will notice like we're trying to take our time with the content like once a week on YouTube, more more of our personal drops from the brand. 144's Print House and Race Studio started from my uh, race number, and I really wanted to make it a little bit less about Nate and more about a brand. We print so much for so many drifters and creatives that we were neglecting our own drops, so you guys hopefully will see that we're gonna get consistent with our own content and our own like personal drops, you know. And drifting, the fucking course. <laughs> we're trying to come up with a new tour name right now, so you guys will see, uh, you're gonna see the new tour schedule, so the 2023 tour schedule and uh, the tour name and the vibe coming out soon. Uh, right now we're just in like planning, so a bunch of phone calls. We're working on it. We're working on it. All right, quick breakdown. Like I said, this is just basically Plano. Downtown Plano is like right here. So we used to come from Rowlett. We used to pull up here. We'd all like have a car meet and then cruise around Dallas to Big Town and drift that parking lot. I'll try to get Tito some clips so he can like plug in some background. But this was like 10 years ago. So we just randomly drove here today. It's nice to see that it's not super packed. And there's a rail in a fucking curb, dude. This is sick. <laughs> I did not know this was here, so actually, uh, maybe skate a little. Let Tito shoot this car. Every day the same shit. I'm a roll another blunt just to escape it. it. Feels like everybody nowadays complacent. Don't know which way they are going on the same shit. I need to escape a different place, a different time and a state. It's not too great. I need some time off. Roll another split time to get high. That was trash. <laughs> Man, that was trash also. <laughs> Last one, guys. <laughs> Fuck, Tito. Dude, trash, Tito. Oh. I'm happy with that one. I'm happy with that one. I think it was decent. Now let's talk about this car. Trash. I'm gonna talk about uh, what we've done to the car. Probably gonna miss a bunch of stuff, so comment below if I miss something. So you guys know a little bit of the background. I got this car from an old employee, Tristan, at Dream Speed Garage. Aesthetically, it uh, kind of came like this, right? This is the kit it came with, which is a final connection kit. And then we basically did a bunch of repairs to the kit and then mounted it uh, in a way where we can drive it every day and it works well. It's a wrap, so this is a wrap. Uh, a lot of people think it's paint, uh, but this is a Nozatec. Um, so this is the Midnight Purple. And essentially, Adrian 
and Brandon wrapped it in house, and they did a great job. Pulls people all the time. Fuck skating. I gotta get. I got my cardio up. <laughs> She's on BC coilovers. So for those who don't know, obviously BC everything. Uh, T7R work emotions. These are 18, nine and a half square all the way around. So we got the grip oil plug. Obviously on like the shift boot, the shift knob, and the steering wheel. Uh, let's talk computer. ECU, ECU Masters, EMU Black, tuned by Art of Assembly. Uh, made like 300 and I want to say 60 horsepower. So one JZ engine, obviously. And I really wanted this car to go to like New York and back. This car is meant for me and my wife and my son to drive around in on the weekend. So it's still got the stock diff and I'm trying not to put a two-way in it. Exhaust, dash built, so he did a full exhaust for us. We did the five-speed swap. Obviously the R154 is in this, so uh, at the shop, it took quite a while to get all the parts in, but once we got all the parts in, I think we did the swap in like two, maybe three days time, so it was like super quick. Twins. Stock, basically a super stock setup. So all we did underneath the engine bay was just some aesthetics. And then like the rear main seal and the oil pan, we just kind of like sealed the motor up. It was leaking. But other than that, it stopped. This is how it should have looked. God damn it, dude. I can't end it on that, Tito. <laughs> Going backwards, dude. Last one. I'm happy with that one. I'm happy. Let's go. Follow me. This was going somewhere. Let's get this Tito. First and foremost, come on, man. We made a few things to help the process, so check this shit out. So when you order stuff, let's say you ordered a die cut sticker. Maybe you don't remember to peel the backing off. Now you will, you know what I mean? So the boys put in some work on the production side of what goes in a box. So hopefully we bring some value there. And then on this next episode, I want to walk you guys through over here. Turn this down because we're always jamming music super loud up in the shop. But on the next episode, we're going to talk screen printing and our race trailer inventory. So it's a new year, uh, so we're going to be pulling some parts off, packaging them up for sale, things that we haven't used, and also walking you through screen printing. We're going to do an in-house print that will launch on the website following a video. So anyway, stay tuned. Next episode, coming soon.